Hi everyone, um, I am trying to go live today, so wish me luck. Um, right, what am I doing? I am going to, I've been asked for a tutorial on a flower pot card. Now this was my entry to the latest global design project challenge which ends uh, today Sunday the 19th this afternoon the flower um, the colors were uh, fresh freesia highland heather and blushing bride and I decided I've been wanting an excuse to um, make a flower pot card so thought I would give it a go um, and I'm really happy with the way that turned out it wasn't the first one that I made this was the first one I made um, and I used all of the um, even the leaves were created with the pansy patch bundle from stamping up but my husband put me off on this one because I asked him what he thought about it and he said well it looks grubby because I'd um, used white card for the pot and then inked it up um, at the side. So um, I have to say the flowers, the, 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 the bundle itself, I guess could be quite intimidating. There are 23 um, stamps here um, and lots of dyes as well let me just bring the dyes in and let me see if i can there's 21 dyes in this set so even for me and i'm uh um an avid crafter it can be a little bit over um uh, overwhelming but actually you just have to have a go um and once you get started it's really easy so my um I will show you how these, how I stamped these, um, but actually today I have used the uh, die cuts to make the flowers, and I've used the same colours, um, and I'll I'll explain um, how I got the two tone effect. So this is Blushing Bride, um, this is Highland Heather, and this is Fresh Freesia. Um, and I'll show you how I got the variegated um, colours on that in a little bit. Um, but the important thing really is to show you how to make the um, flower pot. Now, all the details for this or more details for this will be over on my blog and there will be uh, links in the description box. I'm just going to shut my craft room door, though, because my husband and a friend is outside and I don't want them to disturb us. I'm not sure whether this is uh, this is very impromptu, but I've been putting off going live and I just thought I would do it rather than try and um, record a video. So let me just pop those out of the way. So, yeah, if I show you, actually, you've got the these stamps. Um, they kind of layer up to create the flowers. You've got four levels here, but I only used um, three to create this. So I used that one, that one, and then the middle one. I didn't, uh, to create the centre, I didn't use that. You've got these three for the smaller ones, and then you've got a little bulb, and then two tone stamping for the, um, the leaves as well. And you've got stems and the little um, centers but for my card that I entered into because it was a color challenge you're allowed neutral um, so I use crumb cake for my flower pot and I really like that added a little definition by embossing the um, flower pot and I use the gingham embossing folder I've just realized I haven't got that one out so hopefully it's easy to hand um, and I decided to use some gilded flakes because you're allowed to have gold so I thought that worked very well and I hadn't played with them for a while so I thought that would be quite fun so let me just pop that over there um, these are the dies that create the pansies and you've got 
two layers for the flowers. Obviously these little buds as well. So they're really lovely and they do leave some really nice embossed details as well as die cutting. So I'll just pop that off to one side for a minute and bring in the cardstock and my trimmer. So hopefully, oh, I can see, I think there are two people with me. Say hello if you are with me. So to start off with, I am going to cut, I want two bits measuring 10 and a half centimetres by 10 and a half centimetres. So this is a piece of A4. So I'm going to take 10 and a half centimetres. And because this is 21, I've got those two bits there. Perfect. That makes the, the flower pot. Hi, Tammy. Welcome, welcome. And uh, whereabouts are you from? Tell me. Um, so the top of the flower pots, now this uh, is four and a half centimetres. So one and three quarter inches. And again, you want that. Ah, Tammy is in Missouri. Oh, wow all the way from the States. Um, welcome, welcome. So again, I want that to be 10 and a half centimetres. Pop those two bits there. And then we need a couple of bits for, for the sides. So I want, um, I need four centimetres. So mm, let's see, no. I need nine and a half there, nine and a half, which is three and three quarters inches. And by, and I need two pieces, by four centimeters. Um, now, if you were doing inches, I think you would do one and a half. And the beauty of these trimmers are you can actually score with them. So you've got a trimmer blade and an embossing blade. Um, so you don't want to do it the wrong thing. And I'm just going to emboss and I'm using the scale here at one centimeter, two centimeter. I'm going to score some lines, sorry, rather than emboss, and three centimeters. So you've got scores there and I'm going to repeat that because we need one of those panels for each side and then we need a bit for the insert so we need some basic white and that measures um, I'm going to do 11 and a half. Cut that 11 and a half by eight. And that is three and an eighth by four and a half. So I'm going to pop that away now. Um, oh no, I need to trim these bits down. So I'm going to just come in, I want to mark at um, one and a half off each side there. So the easiest way for me to do it, put a little notch there flip it over and put a little notch again at the bottom. And then I'm going to trim. I'm gonna put the notch that I made in the line of the trimmer. You could do it with scissors if you were confident with scissors. The tip, the top of that square and just slice up 
and then you, you, you've got one side of your pot and repeat that. So the little notch that we made, put that in the track in the centre of the score, that scoring track, cutting track, and then slice up. And you have two little slices. We don't need those now. Now I am going to just oh need to repeat that on both sides. So I'm gonna see where what have I done with my big scissors? Honestly, going live, can't find anything. Here we are. I've got some big scissors here, and I'm just gonna hold that in place. Trim that up. Rather than do two separately. So you can do either way. Now I'm going to go and emboss these. So um, bear with me. See if I can find that embossing folder. Can read. So let me take these away. Sorry, I'm off, off screen. I'll be back with you in a moment. tried and done that both of those together Ooh. here's the embossing folder it's rather pretty isn't it yes, it's very disconcerting hey hazel welcome impromptu live today go both of those are embossed and then I have um, a corner rounder now um, we don't have one in uh, stamping up at the moment so I use my we are memory keepers and I'm just gonna chomp I'm using the this has got two sides so half an inch or a quarter of an inch Yes, Hazel, I'm being brave and going live, most unlike me. So corner that as well. It's very nerve-wracking. And my screen, it's very strange, my screen is back to front, so um, it looks very odd. A quick slurp of my tea. So what I want to do, what I did with my last one, is add a little bit of extra um, crumb cake to my flower pot. So I'm bringing in um, some crumb cake ink and a blending brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit of colour to the edges. Oh, I'm glad, Hazel. I wasn't sure. I've gone live by YouTube rather than a streaming uh, software because I don't really like Emma uses because I don't really know what's going on. I don't understand it. And uh, the technology baffled me. So I thought I'd just give this a go. Um, so I'm just going to I'm not worrying too much about that top edge, actually, because that's going to be covered. But yes, my husband said he thought that the, the pot looked dirty with ink on it, but 
I don't know about you if you've got a garden. I don't I don't know if Tammy's got a garden, but um all my pots get dirty. Anyway, what do men know? Some men, if they're crafters. I'm going to worry about it being absolutely perfect. It's a homemade card after all, eh? Now, this is going to be at the top, so I'm going to go around all the edges here. Dirty pots, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know, Hazel. We do your mobile phone and you've got your... You've got your gadgets, you watch, you do Zoom. A lot of people don't do Zoom. So I think we all went, we all learned to do Zoom during the pandemic. It's just, there we go. It goes quite quickly. I'm just going to, I'm just wanting to add just a little bit of tone on tone. I think it's quite nice. Quite a nice effect. One of these is going to be the front and one of these is going to be the back of our little flower pot there we go and then these are the sides and before I add a little bit of ink I'm just going to do a mountain a valley and a mountain on both of those and I'm gonna I am gonna try just go over those with my bone folder Mountain, valley, mountain. Do the same as both. It's a bit fiddly, um, but I tried it doing it slightly bigger and I didn't like it. So, There we go. Just I'm just going to add a little bit to that as well. There we go. So those are our pieces and I'll do some stamping just so that you can see um, how these stamps work but um, on this card today I will be using the um, flowers that I've made with the dyes. So I'll show you how they go together as well. But I'll do, uh, Hazel will know that Fresh Freesia is my favourite colour. So um, I've got my stamps here and I've got an outline and a filler. And then this is the centre piece. So I'm going to do... The outline in full strength. Now with photopolymer uh, stamps, it's always a good idea to use sort of um, a stamping mat or something that gives you a little bit of um, a cushion because this, that, that's just on a, an acrylic block. But I've got a pad of paper here. So actually I've got um, quite a, a bit of uh, cushion or... I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, now, that's the fill-in, but I want to have that lighter, so I'm going to stamp off and then try and get that lined up. I've got a, the, With the camera here, it's quite hard to see, but that's done quite well. And then that little one goes in the middle 
and there you have a really lovely that's how I made these um, for my card so that's that I am going to go off though and I'm going to use so I'm not using the oh so before I do that I'll show you how the the flowers go go together so I've got I've created a white bit from there I've got two leaves in fresh freesia that is the sort of little central bit and then you've got I've cut from fresh freesia sort of the darker color now I would you would be nice to do that I thought it would be nice to have a slightly variation of color as if you could because when I do the stamping it's been stamped off so the easiest way I found to do that is let's just pop those here I've got a silicone mat here because I, I find that that helps me not get in such a messy uh, a messy state and I've got a stamping blend, the same colour. So this is the dark fresh freesia. And I'm just going over this. You could do this, you could have cut these bits in white um, and then coloured them. But let me just go over these quickly. And because the cardstock is fresh freesia, and I'm going over with the dark fresh freesia, you can see it gives a really nice, slightly darker colour than the original. So when you put it together, and I do need this one for my card, because I'm going to have five of these on decorating the card. And I think this would make, I don't know, this would make a lovely Mother's Day or Get Well card as well as a birthday card. And I haven't put a sentiment in my mine yet because, I don't know, it's nice to have cards ready and in the stash when you need the opportunity. So those are those bits done. And I need to put some glue on those bits and let's just pop those bits. And you can see that the ink has saturated those. Get my, my jump is very bobbly, isn't it? Let's, have I picked up one with, without glue? Let's just pop glue very quickly on the back of those. And I do love my multi-purpose because you don't need a lot of it. Oh, Fresh Freesia is my favourite colour. I'm a purple girl. So that goes on the edge of the, the white piece. And if you don't like the being able to see the edges of the white, just go over them quickly. I sometimes do that with um, designer series paper because I don't want to see the white core of the paper. Yeah, these dyes are lovely. And I have to say, I haven't used them before. So it's shocking, isn't it? We get lovely new stuff. I'm But look at that. I just think that gives a really nice two-tone effect. And sometimes if you're not very confident with colours, and I often take inspiration for colours combos 
from designer series from the pattern paper we have. So they're together. So this little doobie here fits in nicely there. And then you can either have a glue dot or another little bit of glue. And I've popped a tiny little bit of glue on there. That's probably too much. Pop that there. And then a bit of glue. A bit of glue. Don't need much. Pop one there and the other one there. And you have your pansy. How cool is that? I'm trying not to. How lovely is that? So rather than um, I want to keep to the same um, dies here. So I'm just going to die cut um, the artistic. It, I use the artistic die. And it's just beautiful. It's just stunning. So I'm going to quickly go and die cut that bit. I'm going to trim down my paper. It's a beautiful day here. We've got sunshine. Blue skies for a change. I'm missing something. There we go. Let's get the right sandwich. With an intricate die, I'm going to just run that through a couple of times. Make sure I've got all my pieces. Let's get rid of that. Now, sometimes with these intricate dies, I would put um, double sided adhesive sheets on the back, but because I'm I'm actually going to trim this out. I decided not to do it. So let's just pump, pop all those little bits out. Use my nails. What's left of them. I think there are lots of lots of different I think any any flower would work with this I was looking I've got quite a lot of flower sets um, and I think uh, what was I thinking of the other day um, so you could do sunflowers the little sunflower in there you could use um, from Celebrate Sunflowers, um, Happiness Abound, the flowers from there would be gorgeous. I could even see the daffodils or something in here. So, right. Let's pop this. We're all almost ready. Then we've got all our pieces. So let me show you um, now. Do I want to... I'm not sure I'm going to put... Um, a ribbon on here today but I think if I was putting a ribbon on here this was is when you would do it I'm just going to grab some dimensionals and I'm going to pop dimensionals on the back of each of those tops Flower, 
flower pot tops. Oh, glad I've got my teeth in today. Let's have a look. And that wants to be lined up with the top of the flower pot there. Lovely. Both the same. Very strange looking around my camera. Um, and then we need to put these bits in. So I'm going to just do one side at a time. I'll just pop your glue of choice. Mine is always Tombow. Um, and I'm going to pop that down. following the line of the cup, but just in a little bit. So there's a tiny little bit all the way down. I'm gonna use my bone folder just to make sure that that is secure. And I'm gonna do the same on that bit. So you want to have glue on that side there. that you can see what I've done there so just give that a little bit of a rub down yeah you can see just left a little gap and you want to fold them closed and this is the uh, the tricky bit I think. So we want to put a little bit of wet glue on both of those. And then we want to pop this down. And this is where we've got the wet glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room to get that completely level. So you want it sort of level at the bottom. So that it, oh. So that it stands up. So what have I done? Have I not got it level? There we go. Perfect. I don't think it is perfect, but anyway. So this will be my insert. And then we want to arrange our flowers. So what I did last time was so pretty. Let me do that one, that one, that one. Now this one is Blushing Bride, but we don't have a Blushing Bride um, blend. So I actually used, I went off colour, but I used the Dark Flirty Flamingo to add the um, coordinating colour. And I think that works really well. So I'm just going to do, let's have a look, one there one there and I think that will be enough 
And then I'm just going to trim these little pair of my snips. I'm going to trim these down so that I can add these on. I think I'm going to have that there like I did last time. Middle one. I'm going to trim those two off. That's the only bit that's Yep. So I'm going to add this with some wet glue, but the top is going to stand over the edge, and then I'm going to poke that in there. I'm going to do the same with that one. And then I can pop this one up on with the dimensional. But that means I have to add that so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that with a little bit of tear and tape just just to secure that in place Hopefully that looks all right there. Love it. And then these. Again, I'm just going to use, could use a glue dot, but um, Just gonna try that in there so that yeah, that's I'm happy with that that spacing. Bit of glue there. And then we have it. Now, obviously, a sentiment, you've got plenty of space to write a message. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed my, I'm sorry it was a bit uh, stuttery, but there we go. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I say, I will have full details on my blog and um There'll be links to that in the description box below. So thank you for being my guinea pig and joining me today. And I hope to, to, to see you again real soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Hazel. You're really sweet. Thank you. See you soon, lovely. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>